Right now we're struggling with the, the final design of the hardware. The development of Optimus V3 is extremely complex. Elon Musk admitted, building Optimus is harder than Model S, Model 3, Model X, Model Y, but not as hard as Starship. The biggest challenge lies in the design of the hands and forearms, where most technical difficulties are concentrated. Each arm alone contains 26 actuators entirely developed by Tesla, more than the total number of actuators in a Model 3, demonstrating that Optimus is far more sophisticated than a car. How, then, will Tesla overcome these technical bottlenecks to bring Optimus V3 into mass production? Before we begin, please help us reach 20,000 subscribers. It will be a huge motivation for us to continue bringing you great episodes about Tesla Bot, Tesla EVs, and the latest news. This unlocks enormous application potential. Imagine a bot that can rotate its wrist, bend each finger to hold a delicate glass without breaking it, change a light bulb, fold clothes, or cook a meal. In industrial settings, dexterous hands mean the robot could assemble components, tighten screws, or arrange parts. Tasks that today's stationary robotic arms worth hundreds of thousands of dollars still struggle to perform outside of pre-programmed assembly lines. Tesla has a unique advantage in designing these hands. Expertise in sound production costs. A robotic hand typically requires dozens of small motors, servo motors, to control your joint. Research-grade robots today use highly sophisticated servos that can cost thousands of dollars per finger. To commercialize, Tesla must drive that cost down to just tens of dollars per module. This is entirely feasible when we recall how each finger must bend, extend, and rotate with extreme precision while maintaining durability and load-bearing capacity reduced hundreds of vehicle frame parts into just a few castings. Applying the same philosophy, Elon Musk has compared the hand and forearm as where most of the technical difficulties are concentrated, up at mechanics. What truly sets Tesla apart is how the hands integrate with vision, AI, and machine learning. No matter how advanced a hand may be, it is useless if it cannot operate effectively in a complex environment. Tesla leverages its massive self-driving data pool to train the robot's AI enabling it to accurately recognize objects, calculate the right grip force, and adjust its actions depending on the situation. For example, the robot must know when to grip tightly to hold a hammer and when to relax to carry an egg, where Optimus holds a strong advantage over robots trained in limited simulation environments. In the long run, also paved the way for Optimus to enter the household services market, a massive opportunity. Musk has hinted that Optimus could become a general-purpose household helper in the future. According to McKinsey, the global household service robot market could exceed $100 billion by 2030. A robot capable of cleaning, cooking, and caring for the elderly or children would fundamentally change how we think about domestic labor. Compared to rivals focused mainly on industrial use, Tesla's decision to prioritize hand dexterity for Optimus from reflects a strategy aimed at the much larger consumer market. It is worth noting that this ambition is not new for Musk. As early as Optimus Vive 1, the robot would replace dangerous, repetitive, or boring tasks. But to achieve that, the hands must be refined enough. That is why confirming that V3 will feature hands nearly as capable as human ones is not just upgrade. It is a declaration that Optimus is moving closer to real-world usability. In short, the dexterous hands of Optimus V3 are the key to... It is the only way Tesla can achieve absolute optimization minimize dependency on external suppliers, and ensure scalability to millions of units. Beer Cocker Remain constrained by limits and cost barriers, Tesla is betting it can achieve both sophistication and mass production affordability. If six competitors such as Figure AI or Agility Robotics often rely on commercially available components to speed up development. While this approach allows for quicker product launches, it results in higher costs and limited performance. Boston Dynamics has achieved remarkable breakthroughs with Atlas in laboratory settings, but its production costs remain so high that mass commercialization is impossible. Tesla, on the other hand, has chosen the harder path, building everything from scratch in order to scale production up to 1 million robots per year. This is the target Musk has set to bring Optimus's price down to around $20,000. The cost, however, is an enormous workload in design and manufacturing not just in precision mechanics, but also in AI integration, sensors, and AI chips valued at $5,000 to $6,000 per unit. Moreover, the difficulty of producing Optimus goes beyond technology and extends into business strategy. By mastering all 26 actuators and the entire electronic control system in-house, Tesla is essentially constructing a new robotic manufacturing ecosystem from zero.
This is resource-intensive, time-consuming, and requires massive human capital. Yet if successful, it would create a formidable moat that competitors would struggle to cross. Musk has repeatedly emphasized, if Optimus succeeds, it will be the biggest product ever. To turn this claim into reality, Tesla must overcome countless hurdles, from fine-tuning each tiny motor, ensuring every actuator runs smoothly, to optimizing costs so the robot can become a mainstream product. It is precisely this combination of engineering complexity and global scale ambition that makes the production of Optimus one of the most ambitious technological projects in history. Once again, please help us reach 20,000 subscribers. This is important for us to stay motivated. Thank you. Why are the hands and AI brain the biggest challenges for Optimus Gen 3? Although often summarized under just two phrases, the hand and the AI brain, these are in fact two entirely different technical bottlenecks. When combined, they make the challenge of building a truly useful real-world robot immensely complex. Below is a deep dive, from mechanics and sensing to algorithms and system integration, explaining why this problem is far harder than the polished demo videos might suggest. First, dexterity at the hand level is not just about bending a few joints. It requires finely tuned contact force sensing, estimating surface friction, measuring deformation of soft objects, and reacting instantly when an item slips or collides. To achieve this, the robot needs a rich suite of sensors, tactile arrays, force torque, strain gauges, tiny IMUs, positioned strategically, along with signal processing models that can filter noise and infer object states within milliseconds. Mechanically, the hand must be compact yet compliant, meaning soft compliant mechanics or tendon-driven structures that sacrifice some rigid precision in exchange for safety and flexibility. Without these elements, the robot would drop fragile items, crush delicate ones, or fail to grasp complex shapes. Second, high-speed and high-precision manipulation demands a layered control architecture, a low-level loop for torque slash voltage adjustment, higher loops for motion execution, and a strategic layer for sequencing actions. Techniques such as impedance slash admittance control, model predictive control, or hybrid force slash position control are essential as a baseline. But to handle uncertainty in the environment, Learning-based controllers must be integrated to boost adaptability. Training such controllers on real hardware is costly and risky. Simulation helps, but the notorious sim-to-real gap is especially large for soft materials, complex friction, and deformation. Turning to the brain, the AI challenge goes far beyond raw computation. The real issue is grounding language, perception, and action in the physical world. A large model that understands a text command does not automatically know how to translate it into a safe sequence of controls. Grounding is required. Linking linguistic concepts to sensor states, object shape, position, and manipulability. Moreover, the robot must learn from a few examples and behave safely in unseen scenarios. This requires algorithms capable of uncertainty estimation, predicting action consequences, and having fallback plans. Another major hurdle is multimodal convergence. 3D vision, tactile data, audio, proprioception, all must fuse into a single real-time representation. This demands ultra-fast multimodal fusion within strict latency limits. Real-time reactions cannot rely on cloud connectivity because of lag and reliability issues. Compute scheduling must carefully balance low latency inference for motor control with higher level reasoning while also managing thermals, power, and hardware durability. Equally critical is safety and verification. When a robot operates alongside humans, we need scientific guarantees that in scenario X, it will do the Y, or fall back, to safe mode Z. With large deep learning models, full formal verification is nearly impossible. Thus, layered safety mechanisms are needed, including classical limiters, mechanical fuses, passive compliance, and runtime monitors capable of immediate intervention. Finally, there is the human and data factor. For the AI to understand objects and manipulation strategies, Rich datasets are essential, yet collecting safe, high-quality manipulation data is costly. Smart data strategies are needed. Digital twins, domain randomization, clone and perturb in simulation, and physical test rigs with robust error recovery. Continuous learning must also be managed carefully to avoid catastrophic forgetting and to ensure consistency and safety during real-world updates. In short, the challenge of the hand is a sensing mechanics control problem requiring precision, safety, and adaptability. The challenge of the brain is multimodal reasoning, grounding, and learning under limited data. When combined, 
Success requires not just each subsystem to work well, but a unified architecture capable of real-time response, risk assessment, and self-correction. That is why building a robot like Optimus V3, able to manipulate confidently in the real world, may appear simple on the surface, but is in fact one of the hardest problems in modern engineering. What will be the key factor driving down the production cost of Optimus V3? For Tesla, turning Optimus from a lab prototype into a mass-produced product means tackling two conflicting goals at once. Driving costs low enough for market adoption while maintaining the quality and performance needed to make the robot truly useful. Elon Musk has predicted that once production reaches 1 million units per year, the cost of building Optimus V3 could drop to around $20,000. This figure is striking, because if achieved, it would put Optimus in the same price range as mid-tier cars, opening access not just for businesses, but also for individual consumers. However, the actual selling price of Optimus V3 will not be fixed. It will depend heavily on market demand at any given time. If demand greatly exceeds supply, Tesla can keep prices higher to maximize profits. On the other hand, as production scales up and competitors enter the market, prices may have to be adjusted downward to stay competitive. This means Tesla will need a flexible pricing strategy, unlike its EV lineup where price ranges are relatively stable by model. This makes the commercialization of Optimus more unpredictable, since success depends not only on technology, but also on market rhythms and consumer psychology. One of the biggest cost hurdles is Optimus V3's specialized AI chip. Estimated at $5,000 to $6,000 per unit and potentially even higher, this single component could account for 25 to 30% of total production costs. That creates immense pressure on profit margins, especially in the early stages before production reaches optimal scale. This presents a dilemma. Tesla needs powerful chips to handle perception, navigation, and decision-making in the real world. But such expensive hardware drives the robot's cost too high until output reaches hundreds of thousands of units. Thus, the challenge for Optimus VL3 is not only in product design, but also in reducing AI chip costs through process improvements and negotiation across the semiconductor supply chain. Tesla is applying the same scaling philosophy that has already proven successful in the EV industry. The principle is simple. The more you produce, the lower the unit cost. This is what enabled the Model 3 to become the world's most popular EV as Tesla expanded production across multiple gigafactories. For Optimus V3, Musk is using the same approach. Only at the million unit scale can the robot become cheap enough to hit the $20,000 mark. But building a production line for such a complex robot, from precision actuators to AI and sensor integration, is far harder than making cars. This means Tesla must first endure massive investments in infrastructure, machinery, and process optimization before reaching economies of scale. Moreover, Musk has repeatedly described Optimus as the biggest product ever. This statement not only reflects his ambition, but also shows his belief that the humanoid robot market could surpass even the automotive sector. In a success scenario, revenue from Optimus could outstrip any product Tesla has ever made, even the Model Y, currently the world's best-selling car. However, for that vision to become reality, Optimus V3 must first overcome very high initial costs and reach the inflection point where demand is strong enough to trigger large-scale production advantages. Another major barrier is the enormous R&D spending in the early phases. The Optimus V1, V2, and now V3 prototypes have already consumed hundreds of millions of dollars in mechanical design, AI software, and trial manufacturing infrastructure. Each improvement from multi-jointed complex hands to increasingly powerful AI brains, brings new costs. Only once mass production and real sales begin will Tesla be able to start recouping its investment. Therefore, the timeline for commercializing Optimus V3 depends heavily on how quickly Tesla can build production lines and whether market demand will be strong enough to offset the upfront expenses. We appreciate your contributions and hope you will have the most relaxing feelings after watching this video. If you did, please hit the like button and join the Techno Creator family by subscribing to our channel. And don't miss out on any of our awesome videos by hitting the bell icon. We value your feedback and your time. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you soon. Until then, stay safe and have fun.